What's going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning into the Biz with D on my first one's radio right now. We have Sebastian Michael on the line right now. You my note, Sebastian, because he's got that hot song with Wale called Last Night, and he's on with us. What's going on, man? What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Thanks so much for this um, interview. We definitely appreciate it. I appreciate you guys having the interview, man. That's nice. Not a problem, too. When I first heard last night, I was like, who is this Lloyd? I'm like, this dude sounds like Lloyd. He sounds good. Then I found out what she was like, damn. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I appreciate it. No problem. So, um, I know that you're originally from Sweden, right? Yeah, born and raised up there. Now, th- now I know the R&B scene really isn't, you know, like big over there. It's more so like the pop scene, right? Exactly, yeah. It's not, R&B is not really common out there. And, you know, that's actually one of the reasons why, why I wanted to move over here, because, like, in high school, like, I started making music, and, you know, it was, it was you know, more R&B type music, and, and I noticed that the scene over there, the market over there, was, wasn't really open for that type of music. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, you know, so just, you know it's, it's just so natural uh, moving over here, you know. Definitely. Now, being yeah. the fact that, you know, you do R&B, did you ever feel like you wanted to do pop? Is that what was popping over there at the time? Uh, you know, it was definitely, like, it was a time when I was writing, like, a lot of pop music. You know, I wasn't really making it, uh, so much for myself, but I was writing it for other people. But, you know, uh, a lot of the songs I actually put out as myself as an artist in the beginning, like, did a mixtape and stuff like that. And some of those songs were actually pop songs. But, you know, like, as an artist, I always wanted to be a, I always been an R&B singer. And I always wanted to make the type of music I make now, so, you know. Yeah mentioned the fact that you've got this um, single last night, but um, let me ask you about your um, your album title, because the album title was Speechless, right? Yeah. Tell me how you came up with the um, title of that, besides the, because um, I know it's actually uh, it's the title of one of the tracks, right, on the album? Exactly. Yep. Tell, me, tell, me, um, tell me about that track and what we can expect from it. Well, you know, that song is, uh, first of all, it's like actually one of my favorite songs, because you know, it just has a very unique style to me. It's a, it's an acoustic song, actually. But, um, you know, just the feel of it, you know, it's a, it's a soulful, you know, uh, soulful R&B actually moving, but, you know, it's, uh, it's acoustic. And uh, I don't know, I just I just fell in love with that song. And, and you know, it, what it really is, it's like, it, it's a love song, but, you know, it kind of also represents something more spiritual, you know what I mean? So, right. That's, that's you know, that's where speeches came from. But then, it kind of also represents the album, you know, my whole journey, you know what I'm saying, coming from Sweden and, and, and coming over here and really, like, living out my dream. You know, it's, it's a blessing. So, you know, I kind of, that's, like, the feel of, of, of my journey as well. Like, you know, I'm a speaker. That's why I named it that. Definitely. Now, that's what's up there. I know um, that's going to be a high project because, like, you know, the single last night is really popping like like seriously every time I'm like going from somewhere that song comes on I'm like oh my, my this is my cut this is my cut I'll be getting my groove right. on in the car I'll be like I'll be like David you need to get your life and stop acting like you've never heard a song before but it really uh-huh. is that good now let me ask you about you know how you came up with the concept of last night because I was listening to it last night I was really thinking about it you was like you know girls they you know, they pay to have a smile like yours, like that, that, or they don't pay to have a smile like yours, like that's some real shit, though. It is real shit. Like, it's, that whole, that whole, um, concept of song, like, you know, I was working with two really dope producers in Miami. Actually, the, the same producer did speechless, uh, did, uh, last night, and, uh, this amazing writer producer named Lamb. And we were kind of, like, just vibing in the studio, and, like, every, you know, everybody had a story, kind of, like, about, you know, one of those nights, you know what I mean? And, right. and we just kind of, you know, we were just joking about it, and 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 it just came natural. And they already had the concept with the with the Albie Shore sample and stuff. So, so we just we just put it together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. How was it? You know, getting Wale on the track for your first single? Uh, it was it was amazing. Like you know, honestly, you know, he wasn't in the studio when we actually cut the record. He heard it uh, actually the day after we cut it, and uh, oh wow, it was, yeah, it was ill because you know I didn't expect him to just jump on a track and, and you know mm-hmm. he sent it back the same day, like you know it was sent to him and then he sent it back the same day with his verses. So that was so cool, you know, that he really uh, liked the record, you know. Definitely, and rather quick too. Like, were you expecting for him to like 
just even hop on the track at all or nah like we were in the studio like yo you know it would be dope for Ale was on this track he has this type of style you know what I'm saying so we were talking about it but um the fact that that he heard it it was like yo this shit is dope and you know it wanted to be he wanted to be a part of it it was so dope you know it's like it became really what we envisioned in the studio even before you know he was he was on it you know that's what that's what's up so now what other um Rappers or just artists in general, would you like to have on um, the album special? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, right now, like, Wale is actually the only feature we have at this point. Nice. I think we're going to, uh, I don't want to have too many, too many features on it, but I feel like, you know, I'm always going off with Feels Natural, you know, like, that song, I was like, when I when I, we made the song, we heard, like, Wale on the record, so that, mm-hmm. that's why, that's why I can't give it some natural, but, um, Thing is, you know, if I feel like you know, if it comes, you know what I mean, it comes, you know. Definitely. You know what? Honestly, yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I was gonna say I don't even think yeah, I don't even need all them features. I think it's cool that you just got the one feature like that because, like, seriously, dude, you are a singer. Like, Thanks. there is a lot of cats to be, you know, trying to do it like that, and it's just like, don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. Yeah, so I think, like, the album just used to, like, that, like, later, wait on that stuff. Because you know what? With your sound and stuff like that, the rappers are going to come to you. And the female artists are going to come to you. They're like, oh, I'm going to do a song with Sebastian. You can, you yeah. want to lay that track? Yeah. It's going to come. It's gonna come. Word, word. No, that's, that's true, man. No, I appreciate that, definitely. Not a problem. So now you play the piano and the guitar, correct? Right. Now, um, what age were you when you first started learning how to um, play those instruments? Uh, guitar was actually my first instrument. I started okay. playing well, and then uh, piano was, was later. Like I was producing a lot, and, and uh, it kind of it was just necessary for me to like make beats and and, and just produce records. So the piano just kind of came along a little later, uh, and then uh, obviously vocals was just. You know, I, when I started playing guitar, I just started kind of singing while I was playing and stuff. So that's how they came about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now, did you already, like, know, like, early on um, that you had the ability of singing? Or was it, like, something you kind of discovered as you were learning how to play those instruments? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, my, my dad was playing guitar. And, uh, I mean, both of my parents were, like, big music lovers. So, you know, being, being in, uh, in the house, like, they just listened to a lot of music. He played guitar, but it was a hobby for him. Like, no, nobody in my family is really a musician. So, you know, I just kind of took it to the, you know, the next level. I was just so, uh, you know, so uh, intrigued by just creating and, and being part of making music, you know. Definitely. Now, yeah. I wanted to um, ask you, because I know your time was slipping slide, correct? Uh, yep. And you um, were mainly, before it slipped slide, you were just going real hard as an independent artist. And a lot of times, you know, people don't understand, you know, the struggle of the independent artist. How how much of a struggle would you say it was for you? And what things did you, like, learn early on from, you know, the beginning? Uh, man, you know, I just I just always knew that, you know, even if you're a signed artist, it don't matter what label, you know, it's always up to you as an artist to kind of decide where you're going to go, uh, what direction you're going to go, how you want to portray yourself and, 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 you know, just who you're going to be, you know, as an artist. So, uh, obviously, it doesn't happen in the day, you know what I mean? The point is, right. you develop. And that's why, like, I'm, you know, when I first started, you know, I was kind of all over the place with my music, but I just, I, I still put it out. Like, I was just putting out records. And it kept me motivated because people would hear it and be like, oh, this is dope, and they would want to hear more. And, and, and that case became one of the motivations. Like, you know, I want to keep making music and put it out there. Because, you know, because people can relate to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even for for any artist out there that, that you know, that, that started doing, you know, that trying to do the artist thing, like, I just get, I just feel like, um, you know, start putting out music. You know what I mean? And obviously working your craft. You don't want to put out something that's not, you know, developed yet. But, you know, start putting out music uh, even before you have a deal and just kind of like just trying to build up your own career. Definitely. That's a good piece of advice. And how much would you say, like, your fan base has, like, increased 
since, you know, the single has came out? A lot. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy that, that uh, they've been embracing it so much. You know, uh, we've been on the promo tour, and, and that definitely um, made a difference. It's like, you know, obviously, nowadays, we, we, we focus on the Internet, which is super important. You know, mm-hmm. keep putting our content, you got to be uh, active. But, you know, I never really considered the actual uh, promo tour of actually going on the road, promoting your song going to different radio stations and like touching every market I never right. that how like you know powerful that was so like doing that I feel like you, you gained a lot of friends you gained a lot of fans and and, and that's, that's a great feeling you know so and that's very true you mentioned this I like how you mentioned the fact that you know being on a promo tour and hitting every market because a lot of artists don't understand that they feel like okay the label yeah. service you know, the single to this, that, and the third. I'm going to do these couple of interviews that my right. PR set up for me, and it's just that. No, you got to get off your ass, and you have to work. <laughs> like, it's, 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 right. like, you got to go every coast. Like, I try to tell these people, like, you need to be on the East Coast. You need to go to Dallas. You need to go to Houston. Yep. You got to go to, like, you you right. can't bullshit and skip. <laughs> right, exactly. No, you can't. You definitely can't, you know. You can't just sit, sit and wait for, for your record to grow. You gotta really, really work it and and uh, kind of, you know promote it wherever you can promote it. Like one thing that that helped us was that I, you know, when people hear it, man, you know they like it and all that stuff. But then, you know, when they see me, it's like they can attach my my face to it, my personality. It's like okay, this is we made it. And then also me playing playing guitar, like I, I went to stations and performed it acoustically, and that kind of just also shows like. Oh, this is a real song. You know what I mean? It's not just yes. uh, you know, we together in the studio like real. That's a real song. So definitely, that's true. Because I mean, I was watching um, you performing acoustically, and I was like, damn, like this song is like this song is real. <laughs> like this is realer than this when it when it is. And listening in the car, and you're sitting there thinking, like, hmm. I appreciate that, man. Definitely, no problem. So now, um. Do you have any ideas of, you know, your second single, um, the possibly what will be your second single, or are you just focused on keeping this thing out? out? We're, we're actually prepping the second single. Uh, we're, like, going back and forth, uh, you know, decide which one we're going to push. I think we actually have decided already because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we've been doing a lot of a lot of sets and a lot of songs are from my EP that's coming out. So uh, we're just trying to... We're just kind of going, going over it right now, trying to prep it. Nice. So when is the um, when's the EP coming out? Uh, basically, we're going to put out an EP um, for the end of this year. Uh, okay. We're going to put, put two songs uh, for the end of this year, and then uh, and then album's going to come out next year. Oh, no. that's a yeah. good strategy to do it. Yeah, Definitely. It's a good strategy to win, so we can definitely expect like more viral um, since the EP is coming out. Correct? Oh yeah, definitely. We're definitely gonna put out more content and stuff. It's it's crazy, you know. We've been on the road, and obviously, you know, we put out just regular uh, acoustic type of videos and stuff, but we haven't really haven't really locked in the studio. So I'm actually about to uh, about to do that pretty soon, just to get some more content out and stuff. Yeah. Well, definitely. Well, Sebastian. Yeah. Definitely um, keep us posted with everything. And, you know, when you're in the Philly, New York, well, I know you're constantly, like, back and forth between New York. And when you're in New York or in Philly, let us know so we can definitely yeah. sit down and, and you know, go and, and dealt with this interview. But, I mean, dude, we really appreciate it. We're rooting for you, and we love the music. So, like, just keep doing keep doing the damn thing because you, you got the win. Wow. I appreciate it, man. For sure. No, no doubt. So, um, before we have you do the drop, um, tell everybody where they can, um, you know, as like as far as like you know, social media and where they can get that single. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Sebastian Michael. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, the same name, Sebastian Michael, and also the video is actually out right now. And uh, make sure you go check that out. Definitely. What's up? This is Sebastian Michael. And you're listening to the Business D.